little boy how in wonderment and joy I'd watch the trains as they'd go by They are part of America's history, the stuff of folklore, song, and story. Although surprisingly enough, they really haven't been around all that long. Fact is, the first caboose brought up the tail end of an American train somewhere around 1850. Gradually, railroad money men have been getting rid of the caboose whenever possible ever since. Although until recently, a couple of state laws made them mandatory. Now that too has changed as a result of a lawmaker's vote in January. Before repeal, Virginia was the last state in the union to require that freight trains have cabooses. And that, by the way, is the correct plural, cabooses, although cabise used to be acceptable as the plural. A little fun railroad fact. Anyway, the way it looks now, cabooses may eventually join steam trains as a thing of the past, another victim of economic reality and technology. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasant reminder of uh, uh, the good old days, but you know, we don't have the good old days anymore. To most Americans, cabooses are best known as the conductor's home away from home. I still cook on board, and I still make coffee, and still do my paperwork, and I try to keep it clean. Eleven years ago, Bill Albert came to work for the Norfolk Southern, as his father and his grandfather had before him. Someday, your son's going to grow up and ask you what was it like to be on a caboose. And I just had to sit down and tell them what it was like to ride a caboose and take them over to the museum and show them one in the museum. Conductor John Treen has been working for the New York, Susquehanna, and Western Railroad for 42 years. That line stopped using cabooses in 1980, except for special rides like the trip we took. But Treen still remembers when cabooses served a vital safety function. The caboose was where the conductor watched for problems from the back of the train. Well, he's looking for... Uh... Any malfunction along the train, such as uh, uh, hot wheels, uh, defective, maybe there's a door open on the car and the door is swinging, or um, just generally looking for the safety, safe operation of his train. Perhaps as soon as five years from now, almost all trains will have replaced the caboose with something like this, a $4,500 piece of electronic gadgetry known as the end of train device. It's designed to monitor brake pressure and other operating factors. Track number one, no defect. End of transmission. Despite occasional grumbling by the railroad unions, some conductors admit that the devices may actually do a better job than humans when it comes to keeping an eye on today's trains, which can be as much as a mile or two miles long. Trains are so long these days, it's hard to, to see the entire train, especially on the division operator. Well, I, I hate to see it, but uh, it's uh, technology and it's advancement of, of this uh, railroad technology. And if you don't live with the times, they're going to leave you behind. In the future, conductors will ride the engine up front with the rest of the crew. Most cabooses will be sold for scrap or nostalgia or donated for historical uses. The railroads say that nationwide, they will save an estimated $6 million a year on caboose maintenance and safety-related costs. And railroad buffs and old-time train men will mourn their passage into the cloudy mists of vanishing Americana. If you don't have no cabooses, you won't be in a train. No, the whistles don't sound like they used to. Lately, not many trains go by. Hard times across the land mean no work for a railroad man. You know the Greenville trestle now don't seem so high.